Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. Okay, let's look at the disjunction now, the or situation. So whether you have and or or in a statement, it has a big effect on the logical outcome. If any of you are interested in being lawyers and when you're writing a contract, if you put the word and instead of the word or, you're changing the meaning of the contract. Okay, so it's very important that we understand when is an and statement true and false and when is an or statement true and false. Well, it says identify the component statements in each compound statement and use their truth values to determine the truth value of each disjunction. Ms. Hearn teaches math or Superman wears a cape. Okay, so what's the first component in that statement, part A? That's right. Ms. Hearn teaches math is a simple statement, and we've joined it to another simple statement with the word or, creating a compound statement. Ms. Hearn teaches math, we know is true. How about the second component, Superman wears a cape? Also true. Okay, so if I say to you, Ms. Hearn teaches math or Superman wears a cape, am I telling the truth or am I lying? That's right, I'm telling the truth. I'm saying that at least one of these, but possibly both, is true, so I'm still telling the truth. So the overall truth value of part A would be true. So whenever in general we have true or true, that's going to give us a true statement. All right, how about Miss Hearn teaches math or Superman does not wear a cape? Truth value of the first component, Miss Hearn teaches math. That's true, right? But it's false to say Superman does not wear a cape. So if I walk up to you and say Miss Hearn teaches math or Superman does not wear a cape, have I lied? So or is really telling you exactly, Rashad, that one of these is true. At least one of these is true. Is at least one of these true? Yes. Miss Hearn does teach math. So it's okay that Superman uh, does not wear a cape is false. This is still going to be a true statement because this or is very different from the word and. And guarantees both or does not. So in fact, in general, for anything of the form true or false, that's going to be a true statement. Okay, so how about if I say in part C, Miss Hearn does not teach math or Superman wears a cape. This means Miss Hearn does not teach math, that's false. But Superman wearing a cape is true, right? So we have false or true. So am I lying if I say that to you? No, because I'm only guaranteeing that one of them is true. Very good. So that means that this statement false or true is going to still be true. Okay, and then let's look at part D. Miss Hearn does not teach math or Superman does not wear a cape. So I know that I teach math, so that component's false. Superman does not wear a cape, definitely false. So false or false, is there any way I could possibly be telling the truth? No, because I'm guaranteeing at least one of these is the case. So false or false is false. In a disjunction, remember or is called a disjunction. In a disjunction, what is the only case where we got false? Two falses, that's right. So this is the second extremely important rule that you need to make a note of. A disjunction is only false if both parts, and I'm being a little bit casual when I say parts technically, those parts are called components. But a disjunction is only false if both parts are false. All right, so let's complete this truth table. Notice this truth table looks a lot like the previous truth table. We have the possible truth values for P. It's true half the time and false half the time. And then we have the possible truth values for Q, but we have them alternating true, false, true, false. That's always going to be the pattern. You're always going to see these first two columns the same in every uh, truth table that has two components so that we get all four of the possible scenarios. All right, so now let's fill in the truth values. Where did, what was the rule that we just wrote down? Disjunction is only false if both components are false. So which row do we see that? Row one, two, three, or four, do we see the scenario where both are false? Only in row four, that's right. So that means that row four is the only false scenario. 
So I should put what in the rest of the rows? True, that's right, true, true, true. Okay, so this is the official truth table for a disjunction, an or statement. Only false when both are false. So with that in mind, take a minute. I'd like you to read through this exercise and determine the truth value of the given statement. So this is the way that I would work out this problem. First, I would look at P and determine its truth value. Four is greater than one, so P is true. Then I'd look at Q and determine its truth value. 12 is not less than nine, so that's false. So then I would write down P or Q, and I would put true or false, replacing each component with its truth value. And then I would use my rule for an or statement. What's the rule for or again? Only what if what? It's easy to confuse the, the symbols at first. Here's something that might help, Rashad. Do you remember in the set theory chapter, the intersection and the union? Do you remember intersection was associated with which word, and or or? And, that's right, intersection was and. And the union was or. All right, so if you think about it, the and symbol in logic is just a pointy version of the intersection symbol and the or symbol in logic is just a pointy symbol of the union, uh, pointy version of the union symbol. So really these are the same symbols, we're just, we just made them pointy for the logic. So if you can relate it back to that, then you'll always remember. All right, so this one is like U for union, so that's gonna be or, okay? So the rule for uh, or is only false if both are false. Do we have both false here? No. Nope. So then it must be what? If it's not false, it has to be true. That's right. Okay. So in, okay, step one, identify the truth values. P is true. Q is false. And then use the rule and or is only false if both are false. So it's true since P is true. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.